All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Now Building Stronger Humans Radio. So we've changed the name over, a little bit of branding uh, idea I had. So instead of Hanson Athletics Radio, we just changed it over to our slogan at Hanson Athletics, and that's Building Stronger Humans. Um, that can include a lot of different aspects, and uh, I like the name of that better. So that is now the name. Um, today I got a great question. So we're going to cover, uh, a question that was asked about the negative effects of lifting weights as youth athlete. So this is something that, I mean, this has been going around for a long time. This is questions that, uh, a question that has popped up, floated around. I've been asked, uh, growing up, my, my parents asked this question when I was young. I think there's some sort of tall tale that lifting weights, as a, a young athlete, a youth athlete, or before a certain point in life, uh, is bad for you. Um, in terms of, it seems to always be stunts your growth or growth pr- plate damage. That tends to be the most common in terms of where people are associating it being bad. Okay. And potentially even now that I think about it more, bad knees, bad back, which as they grow up, which isn't the case at all, okay? Um, Obviously, doing anything really poorly, too heavy all the time can be bad, right? So we're going to dive into some things um, to look for slash answer this question. So what's important with youth training is that it's appropriately structured. So the training needs to be created for a youth athlete. Okay, you don't want to just go online and grab a program that from someone that A, wrote it for a, usually it tends to be a high level athlete that's in their 20s and 30s and implement it with your kid. You don't want to grab a CrossFit program off online that your gym uses. You don't want to grab anything random to give it to your kid. Okay. Cause there's a couple reasons why, but a main reason would be that your kid is a, not a high level athlete and B depending on their, I mean, kids at different ages at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, they all are so differently developed based on the individual. So there's a lot of issues that can arise from that. So one thing you want to look for is a program that is designed for youth athletes. So it's appropriately structured. Um, if you don't have an idea of what that could look like or what it would, would include and you're shopping gyms, uh, reach out to me, reach out to a coach you trust in your area, someone that has some experience in strength and conditioning. Number two is, is the implementation of that program. So taking something on paper and then implementing it correctly in person with athletes, uh, that that's going to be hard, right? Uh, for some people in terms of you might have, a, that's the problem is you might see a program online um, for an elite athlete and it's calling for, let's say you have a program with percentages in it, right? Most of you guys that have followed some sort of training program before they have percentages. Okay. That's an easy way for people to write things. Um, it's not how I write things really ever anymore because it's, it's too, subjective. So if if I tell you to lift 80%, um, there's no way, even an athlete in high school, okay, high school athletes, middle school athletes, none of these kids slash adults are developed enough to actually run a program or to actually lift a barbell at a true one rep max. Um, a lot of them don't have the background with lifting. Okay, there's a, maybe a select few kids that have been training in a good program since eighth grade and now they're a senior in high school. But for a majority of those younger athletes, percentages are totally not the case, okay? Because they can't hit a true one or at max. They don't have the skill. They haven't developed the ability to lift weights well, okay? It's just like if you were going to put them in a – you're like, oh, I want my kid to play football. I'm going to throw them in a high school uh, varsity game first thing. Okay. They don't have the prerequisites to, to step in that situation and be successful. So they're never going to actually get a, one, a true one rep max. Okay. Number two is these kids are, are growing and changing so often and uh, they're not sleeping as well. They're not eating as well as they should. 
it's going to be fluid. It's going to change um, based on the day, really, or w- what time you're getting them at. Are they? Did they have practice earlier in the day? Yada yada yada. So percentages are a lost. That it is not effective unless you have either a highly trained elite athlete, um, and that even goes with Olympic weightlifters or anybody, even strength sports. The percentages don't work. You need to, unless you are a very select few, they are not going to work for you. You need to go off how you feel that day and maximize what you have each day as you come into the gym so rep ranges i think are are more beneficial when you implement a program like that Uh, work to a challenging three for the day work to a challenging five Uh, a coach that's that's worth his salt will know uh, a five and a three are going to put them somewhere if you really want to be stuck on percentages it's going to put them in a certain range typically uh of of a percentage of, of what they could do once based on whether it's a five or three rep. Okay. There's pretty good ideas of, of where that leaves your athlete at. Okay. So don't throw a program at them with the percentages. They're not ready for that. Um, it should go more off fill every day. Um, and then number, and then let's jump into the next part is this saying of ne- the weightlifting weights being bad for youth athletes. It's been, it's been studied so many. It's like literally been, debunked so many times but nobody has looked into the studies and and followed uh people actually scientifically getting a group of people and testing this on youth athletes and having a, having the whole uh scientific theory practiced out go through look at different populations get randomized populations um and whatnot and there it does not cause these these things that people are are saying it is okay so it's studied if you want to look it up look it up please because it's not it's not true um and one thing it can do for your athletes is it's, it's going to increase their capability uh well let's just put it this way so a phrase we use at the gym is accelerated adaptation so what it's going to do is it's going to help these kids progress physically, obviously, um, but also neuromuscularly. So their coordination, neuromuscular coordination, their ability for their brain to control. We'll just break it down to their ability for their brain to control their body. Okay. Uh, when they think about doing something or they need to find stability through movement, uh, exploring ranges of motion. Um those are all things that need to be developed and it happens over time through puberty and through being exposed to different things. Uh, in the, in the gym, we can, we can move that forward quicker. So by using external forces, using weights, using different types of drills, uh, you can help accelerate the adaptation or the development of that for the athlete. So there's a lot of different things that more than beyond just getting strong or putting on muscle that having an appropriately structured program uh, is going to help these athletes do it's it's pretty insane how much progress they can make so quickly um so now let's jump into what will actually hurt your athletes potentially hurt their growth plates uh potentially cause an injury that would keep them from growing uh, to have injury down the road yada 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 see this all the time playing too much sport and practicing okay uh it's pretty insane. I would say I have a handful of athletes, um, young, like let's just say seventh grade through sophomore in high school that play over a hundred basketball games a season. Okay. Uh, and that's not to count the other two sports they're playing. So let's just use that one sport, a hundred games. That's insanity. Okay, guys, it's crazy. Okay. The professional athletes, Like they should not be playing as much as a professional athlete. And you know something you're not going to see at a, at the professional level when they are playing that many games is these, these, these kids are playing these many games. And then at practice, their coaches are still running them. Their coaches are running them, conditioning them, punishing them with exercise, yada, yada, yada. So they're playing full speed sport, uh, over 100 games a season in just basketball. They're also being conditioned by the coach because they feel like they need to be in shape. Okay. Your, your youth athlete is running 
and playing sport more than a professional athlete. If you went to a professional athlete practice, if if you were to go even to a high level, even if you go to a college practice, a high level college practice, um, those coaches are very aware of the amount of work they're doing with with their players when it comes to exercise, running, and things that can beat their athletes up. Okay, man. You're not going to show up to the Golden State Warriors practice and they're just running their athletes. Okay. It's not, they're not going to, that's not how it works. Okay. So at this lower level, these coaches are just not aware of that and they're playing that many games. They're running their athletes. They're not aware of what their athletes been doing throughout the majority, the entire day. Okay. There's some athletes that are doing extra training, like kids that come work with us. There's some athletes going to other spots. Like by the time they get to practice, they could have already had an hour to an hour and a half of physical activity before practice. Okay. Um, that is where kids are getting hurt. Okay. That's where you're seeing the overuse injuries. So people, are, kids are hurting their growth plates. Uh, kids aren't prepared for uh, that amount of volume. They're not eased into it. So let's say they go and play, they're playing a different sport of football. Uh, they're not running as much. All of a sudden they get thrown into basketball. The basketball coach typically isn't ramping this up. They don't have an opportunity to get a bunch of uh, what I would just call mini impacts in. So like sport is full of small impacts. Like running is an impact each time you hit the ground. Um, it's it's just full of it, okay? And if the athlete is not uh, built up to that correctly, uh, that's where you start to see injuries. They run poorly. They haven't had coaching. They hill strike. They have shin splints now. Uh, their knees hurt all kinds of stuff. Okay. And it's not because they maybe lift weights for an hour and a half a week. Okay. The reason they have these injuries and these overuse injuries is because they're playing too much sport and they're being ran too much in practice. Okay. It's not, your kids will get in shape by playing the sport. That's the, that's the misconception is people want to just run their athletes, run their athletes, run their athletes. You don't want your athletes to be in the best shape they can be in at the beginning of the season. You want to peak them at the end and you can't just hold a high level of fitness for, you can't get your kids all the way in shape and then have them hold that level of fitness for four or five months without running into injury. You need to, they're going to be a little out of shape in the beginning of the season. You need to build them up and they need to peak by the time that it matters. Okay. That's, that's the misconception um, is you can't hold them in the best shape the entire part of the year you can't do that there's ebbs and flows with an athlete um that leads right into a lot of these kids are not sleeping well okay they're not eating enough food i would say um, i would say 95 percent are not eating enough okay they're not overeating most of them are under eating so when you're under eating you have poor sleep you're practicing too much and you're playing too much sport that's way more dangerous for your athlete than lifting weights way more dangerous and and with so many parents are putting their kid in that situation so that hopefully answers your question on our opinions on the, the negative effects of, of lifting weights as a youth athlete. They're under, in, under a, supervi- uh, a coach and a supervised program, uh, pretty much zero negative effects of lifting weights. Um, just make sure you're working with an intelligent coach. Okay, Ask them questions. Ask their background. Ask their education. Ask their own personal experience um, with training, with uh, sport, whatnot. Okay. Ask your friends, ask people that go to their gym. You need to do some digging before you just take your pro- your kid into a program. Um, that's important because you need to actually understand the background of the people. Uh, you might have a coach that looks really good on Instagram and they've only been coaching for five months and they're doing drills they see on Instagram and they're trying to train 12 year olds like they are uh, elite athletes. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, that's a problem. So you need to look into this, look into the background, ask the right questions. Okay. It's hard to tell sometimes up front with social media who, you know, who's been around the block. You want to look for experience and people that have worked with a lot of different athletes and really understand how to train an athlete versus um, just generally lifting weights. Okay. There's a lot of different little uh, nuances that go into it and it's important to do that research. So If you guys have any further questions, send them over. Check out the Instagram, Hanson Athletics. Uh, My personal one's Coach D. Hanson. I throw up question bubbles uh, almost every day. Drop any questions you have in there, and the the good ones will make it to the podcast. 
and I'll answer every one of them on my story. I appreciate the support. Make sure to check check out our Wake Your Ass Up coffee. Okay, that is on our website. All the proceeds go to a scholarship fund for our kids, uh, kids that come in the gym, and kids that can't afford it. So we find ways to supplement their their uh, ability to come into the gym, get them in for sessions. Now keep an eye out. We are moving in March to a bigger facility. We're gonna have some pretty cool stuff coming up. And I appreciate the support again. I hope you guys have a great day and welcome to 2022. Coach D out.